Africa Zama Citizen Town Hall tukio tunazidi tu kuzungumzia uh, masuala ya kutafuta haki mahakamani na nataka sasa kuwapatia nafasi watu watatu tu waweze kutueleza maswali yao kuhusiana na jinsi wanavyoona mambo yanavyotekelezwa katika idara ya mahakama Charles Thank you so much my name is Charles a student from St Paul's University So mine is not a question mine is more of a concern like how fair is the judiciary justice system because uh, for example you have been having these public figure personnel uh, committing serious crimes and you are not seeing them in serving jail terms for example we had the NOS saga we had the dam scam and uh, recently we had a legislature making hate speech remarks and all we see in the news is people are being released on huge cash bills and bonds whereas on the other hand when you go to these local courts Common wananchi are being convicted each and every day with very petty cases such as drunk and disorderly. So does it mean that when it comes to the common wananchi, uh, serikali economy economy ref, while when it comes to this public personnel, your hands are tied or is it that the monetary value that matters? Thank you. Faustin. Thank you. My name is Faustin Juma. I'm a finalist law student at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. Okay, introduction of plea agreements to the Kenyan criminal justice system was a way to uh, deal with this issue of uh, delayed justice. But these agreements tend to bring more leniency to the accused persons, thus disregarding the uh, interests of the, of the victims in criminal cases. My question to Mr. Kakai, how effective are these agreements more specifically with the regard to the article 50 sub article 1 issue of fair hearing kabla kakai hajajibu swali hilo nadhani anazungumzia zaidi mambo ya out of court settlement nataka pia kumpatia nafasi Maxwell Munyendo aulize swali ambalo wengi wamekuwa wakijiuliza hususan kuhusiana na wale ambao uh, DPP na DCI wanajaribu kuwakamata lakini kuna uh, agizo linalotoka mahakamani kuwa wasikamatwe Maxwell Thank you very much Masherima I am Munyendo Joel Maxwell, an esteemed student leader at Kwea. Uh, Kenya is a country that believes in the rule of law. We are a constitutional democracy. But of late, there has been an offsetting trend whereby suspects apply for anticipatory bail uh, to deliberately delay cases. For example, you, you the the dpp comes uh, you, you 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 envisage a scenario where the dpp will come looking for you you apply for an anticipatory, anticipatory bail then that uh, that, uh, that that thing uh, keeps on uh, keeps on lagging and also the issue of uh, you are filed you are filed as uh, a case is, a case is opened against you you file a suit at a higher court challenging uh, uh, maybe the eligibility of a, a, law, a magistrate hearing, hearing a case, especially established people in the legal fraternity. So, can we find a way, can we find a way, you are a very important asset in the uh, judicial systems, can we find a way of uh, nipping this trend of anticipatory bails, uh, maybe by way of uh, making some changes in our penal codes or or our civil criminal procedure rules so that uh, uh, this trend is fully nipped in the bud. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, that question was to you, by the way. Whether you, you're thinking of finding a way of circumventing the anticipatory bail issue or recusal of magistrates. I think these are matters for the discretion of a judge yeah. or a magistrate. And I wouldn't want to get into that because each case has its own factors. Yeah. What is important for me is that the investigating arm, the investigators do their work well, and they reduce on the theatrics of uh, arresting and uh, holding people to court. And I'm one person who says even bail should be free. We, what we should really do is uh, in these matters here, I would rather even give these people free bail but say that we are going to hear this matter non-stop for the next 14 days and conclude it. I would rather something like that. Then going for these bails, then the matter stalls, stalls there. 
and then you come back two years down the line, then you are told that the investigation file, I don't know, the rats ate some pages, I don't know what happened, those kind of things. So to me, for matters which are left to the discretion of a judge, I wouldn't want to interfere, let the judge make that discretion, the law allows it, it is there. And bail for me is not, should not be a very big issue because most of these people are, going, are not flight risks. Take the case of uh, the governors who are being brought to court. I don't see where a governor is going to run to or something like that. So I would rather give them free bail, but ensure that for the next one month or 14 days or 20 days, whichever time period of time that has been set there, yeah. we go to court every other day, hear this case and conclude it. And can, these things are done. Okay. And when the matter is really urgent, yeah. the cases are done. The cases are done. I will give you a case for the other day which I filed on the issue of the currency. There was a three-judge bench, and they gave us very hard timelines. And within uh, a very short period, we had finished with it was a petition, and we, we may not be as complicated as having to cross-examine witnesses and things like those. Yeah. But we were able to do it, and we finished. So me, I think they should be, we should develop, especially on matters that concern governance, uh, in that the concern, confer, concern governance. Yeah. I believe that, because the public is still entitled to services that these officers are supposed to render, I think that it should really help us to fast track these matters, get done with them, so that we can know that the person who is serving us yeah. is uh, a person with clean hands, to continue serving or he has got dirty hands and he should not be serving us. But to go the way we are going, I don't think we are going to get anywhere. Okay. And also the other thing is that uh, among, among, among some of the things that we do is that we have, we have mischaracterized some of the issues we do. Okay. Like you get uh, theft. We have mischaracterized theft, we call it corruption. We have embellished it, it looks good. Corruption is a good thing. Theft is a bad thing. So, and one fellow has been uh, saying that if we reduce the centers of investigation and maybe left it to the DCI, and I'm one fellow who doesn't believe in the anti-corruption commission and stuff like that, those things that are set up for the rich, let the OCS, let the police officer take charge of these things. We have got uh, economic crimes, whatever. If we, if we want to serious crimes office. Isn't it easier to corrupt one system? Because you're saying that we should narrow it down maybe to just the DCI. It is easier to hold them accountable. And let us have one system, one system, hold them accountable. Than having so many multiple agencies and what have you. Even get parliament nowadays calling people who have been accused of crimes to appear before committees. I don't know what they're going to do there. And let us give the investigating bodies the autonomy they need. Something very bad happened in this country the other day. When the deputy chief justice was accused of serious crimes by a constitutional office. And you saw all the judges close ranks behind her. Make her untouchable. So when you appear before a judge like that, what do you say? What do you expect her to do? Call her my lady? And she has not been cleared, and it's the DPP, it's the DCI, saying you have committed ABCD crimes, and the judges come and surround her and will say you cannot touch her. Those are the things that are destroying this country. Okay. Let us have one law for everybody. Because all, all of us have got to do, if you look at, look, look at the composition of the Judicial Service Commission, look at the membership. You want to tell me that those people have got the capacity to determine whether this person is criminally culpable or not. Okay. You see, so those are the kind of things that are happening. And we'll also find that, uh, like I'll, I'll go to the Supreme Court. There was a case that affected the LSK, where they had this issue of where they wanted to put up an arbitration center and there were these things of fees and what have you. And they went on fighting until the, the, the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal uh, expressed itself. Yeah. They ran to the, at, 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 on an intellectual application, the Court of Appeal gave some orders. Okay. They went to the Court of, they went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court took the case. They looked at it and gave some orders. And they did that just to serve themselves because they are lawyers. These judges are lawyers. 
But anybody else getting orders, uh, temporary orders at the Supreme Court, at the Court of Appeal, if you go to the Supreme Court, yeah. they tell you you have got no jurisdiction. Okay. So this issue of uh, judges also turning around to serve themselves yeah. and to protect themselves and to think that because they are lawyers, yeah. they are better than everybody else or lawyers think they are better than everybody else okay. is something that has go because we don't want a rule by, by lawyers, yeah. we don't want a rule by judges, we don't want a rule by politicians, yeah. we don't want a rule by the civil service, rule we want a rule by the law. Okay, all right. Yes. Harriet, is it a self-serving system? Um, allow me to say this. Yeah. Um, if we have a system that works it then means the system should be able to serve its people and not the other way around. Why do I say that? Let us look at uh, countries which have functional systems. And I'll use two, maybe the Switzerland and Netherlands. Um, you'll find in such countries, for me to arrest you as an officer, I will actually write you a letter. And you'll present yourself. I don't need to come using force and all the other theatrics that we see within the African setup yeah. to arrest you and arraign you in court and now lock you up behind the prisons. Why? They have systems in place that work for their people. What has happened? The society now changes. Um, you find that the governance structures is almost perfect. Their prisons are now empty. Yeah. There is no need to have um, accelerated crimes within yeah. the social setup yeah. because the whole societal system is working. Okay. And that starts with the education, yeah. come to leadership. And I want to blame Kenyans for putting the same leaders they are complaining about. Back in power. Back in power. Okay. Because you, the people, hold the mantle to pick the leaders that will serve you and serve you properly. Okay. You know? So you cannot sit back and keep pointing fingers to the accountants, to the lawyers, to so and so, to the judiciary, to wherever, but we ourselves have refused to take the societal um, responsibility that is vested upon us by God okay. to ensure that the environment we live in is perfect. It can be perfect, but it's purely pegged on ourselves. Okay. And that takes me back to the moral setup of <laughs> the society. You talked about the moral fabric before. Yes, so have, starting with our yes. churches, okay. leading to all the professions, to the schools, our teachers, and where we are as professions. All right. Yeah. Let's take some comments coming from our viewers, and that I'm sure there's some questions for Kakai in the Mashirima. Nam, kuna baadhi ya jumbe ambazo zimetumwa kwenye mtandao wa Twitter, Sami Adao Anyona. Anasema, wanasema dau la mnyonge haliendi. Mahakama katika taifa hili limewakwaza wanyonge miaka mingi. Kisa na maana wananchi hawaelewi lugha na stakabadhi zinafichwa humo. Digitize records and abolish shorthand notes by judges. Uh, kuna mwingine naye hapa Professor Felix Musau. Anasema all cases need to have timelines based on evidence available. There are many cases which have taken too long denying Kenyans justice. And if you check, there aren't enough reasons. Bonds have also been misused. Mugore Nderitu, anasema my take from experience, justice for sale in Kenya. No due process, high court fees, deliberate delays, costless manipulation, lost files, defective ruling in some cases, and no execution of rulings. Trevor. Absolutely. There are several feedback coming through. We're trying to sneak as many of them as we can because we've run out of time here. Joshua Muka responding to the question whether should all cases be heard and determined within a stipulated time. He says, yes, this will help reduce crowding of cases in courts, which eventually lead to inefficiencies in our judicial system. Mark Oseno says, on obeying court orders, something must be done when obvious government institutions fail to obey court orders, they lead other ordinary Kenyans of lawlessness like the TSC currently with their unions. And we also have another text here from Gladys Burini. She says, yes, while not all cases are on the same merits, they should have fixed timelines accordingly. Cases being adjourned and prolonging for years because the judge isn't sitting or the lawyer didn't turn up or follow due process is a waste of the court and citizens' resources. So now I'll give you a chance for a final comment from each of you, and I'll start with Kakai. I think I'll uh, respond to the question that the gentleman asked in terms of uh, an out-of-court settlement and how effective are out-of-court settlement. I think the legal system allows out-of-court settlement in any of the given cases, save for 
murder cases and manslaughter cases, but all other criminal cases and all other civil cases or land cases and so forth, you can have an out-of-court settlement. Why do we have an out-of-court settlement? We have an out-of-court settlement because we complain that the, the, the system is clogged with the cases. There are so many cases, the cases are taking long, there are delays. So if you are able to sit down between the two of you and agree that this is how you want your case to end and every one of you feels that it's a fair way of ending it, then courts are more than happy and lucky to actually do what we call record the consent and settle that matter out. And remember that Katiba has also tried to answer this question because Kenya is a very litigious nation. And being a litigious nation, everybody uh, who does anything or does something right or wrong will want to run to court because we believe that it's only through the judicial system or our court system that we will get justice. Yet Katiba itself has said you have other means or alternatives of solving a dispute. Some of them, for example, is through the ADR. But you can realize that ADR system in this yeah. country is not properly used or not, is not exploited, yet it's completely enshrined in Article 159 of the Constitution. So basically, we are, Kenyans then should try to see that there are other means and ways of settling disputes apart from a uh, court system. Okay. So this, these are some of the challenges that we have to see and yeah. navigate around in terms of uh, not just blaming an institution yeah. one or the other, but finding ourselves how do we solve these co cases out of the court system. Okay. Okia, final remarks, one minute. Well, my only remarks is that the area, the area of judicial maybe accountability or efficiency is an area that demands a lot of uh, engagement, a lot of input from parliament in terms of budgetary allocations, and especially to appreciate that the judiciary plays a very, very important role among us. Yeah. We also need to have uh, a mechanism for holding judges accountable especially like uh, you saw and again i go back to the supreme court which i've got issues with you saw the supreme court the last time we had a matter which was very very important before the last elections and the judges decided to boycott sitting and then they came back and began sitting like they're small gods me i think that those judges who boycotted sitting should not be sitting in the court because we had a right to be served we went to court but these characters, because they think they are special, they did not show up in court, and nothing has been done to them. Apollo Mboya tried to push it, it never worked. So with, the, with that kind of attitude among the, some of these top judges, it doesn't help. Okay. And me, I think that uh, if judges can stop playing politics, they would help shape this country, because when I look at uh, the history of some countries, yeah. Major changes in society have been affected by the judiciary. By the judiciary. Okay. And uh, on the side of the professions, I would like to differ with my sister. I don't blame the Kenyan voter at all. Yeah. The Kenyan voter, when you look at the election time, look at the manifestos, look at the promises that are made. Nobody ever comes and says that I'm coming, give me the chance to mess you up. <laughs> they always say give me a chance to make your life better. I'm going to do whatever, I'm going to do whatever, I'm going to do whatever. Then you believe them, then you vote for them, <coughs> and uh, you get the politicians. Yeah. <coughs> but the elephant in the room is not the politician. The elephant in the room for me yeah. is the professionals. Okay. What action has the law society taken against lawyers who have drafted the hundreds and hundreds of faulty contracts that have messed up this country? Nothing. The accountants who have approved whatever, the engineers who have endorsed projects that have failed, what action has been taken against them? Okay. And in fact, me, the, the point we are getting to a point whereby we should forget about the politicians and go back to the professionals. Okay. Because the professionals are the prophets of our society. They are the people who are trained. Because if an engineer refuses to certify this yeah. building as having been done properly, the, the, the fellows who did it will not be paid. Okay. But, in, but the, because the professionals we have and the professional societies are not up to scratch, our society is in the mess it is. Okay. The politicians have got no signatures yeah. that, can, that, that, that result in corrupt deals. Okay. Harriet, I'll give you a chance to respond to that. Um, first, I want to differ with Okeo Mtata on one thing. When you look at our parliament, who are there? Lawyers. Professionals, isn't it? 
Yes. Now, we cannot then disassociate professionalism and politics. And that is one of the biggest problems we have in this country. When you say politician, we want to look at politicians as some different cluster of human beings away from us yeah. as Kenyans. He's mentioned something very important, that when politicians come to us with manifestos, what are we saying? Do you want to say that we as Kenyans are so blind, so blind that we cannot do proper analysis of what is viable, what is not viable? Yeah, but do also you, he has asked what LSK has done to rein I want in to come, the I want lawyers. to come to because that. Because of time, I'd like to summarize. Yes. Yeah. LSK has also punished quite a number. We have a role of quite a number of advocates who have actually been deregistered from the role of uh, uh, advocates. So it's not fair for him to actually say we have done nothing. Something has been done. Okay. The question is, does the media cover all these things? Some of, this thing, some of these disciplinary processes take part behind the cameras, you know? And that is how process should be done. If you want to get the register of the deregistered members of the Law Society of Kenya, you will get them. Because there is there, because a, is there a there. chance then that the Kenyans would still there. go to the deregistered people because they don't know they've been deregistered. Exactly. And soon, I think we should be able to publish that list if it's already not there in our, in our website. It, and it should be there. That is one. Kenyans also have the opportunity to Google and check the kind of lawyers they want to deal with. Okay. Our list is there. You can be able to tell this lawyer is active, this one is not active, all right. and all that. In terms of prosecution of matters in court, the court matters which are still going on, we cannot discuss them now. Yeah. That is up to now the prosecution to do their work and do their work properly okay. so that we can see these particular individuals who have been arraigned in court that those cases are actually finalized. All right. Finally, on yeah. matters digitization, I said yeah. digitize, di digitizing any system yeah. is not the answer to all the problems because digitization is not the wizard or rather the magic yeah. uh, in terms of solving all the co society problems. Okay. It can also be another area where new crimes actually come up again. Come up again. You said garbage so in, garbage it out. goes right. back to the moral fabric. Okay. Where are that we having been said. All right. Yes, Thank the you. moral fabric. Harid Chigai, Vice President, Law Society of Kenya, Kakai Kissinger Advocate, and Okio Mtata, Human Rights Activist. If you're watching this program tonight and you're wondering what to do with the legal battles that have taken so long in court, you have two options. One, walk to the LSK, the Law Society of Kenya, along Gitanga Road. They say it's free, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can come and get consultation from you for free. And we are also running our legal aid week All in right. October. Okay. And then you can also go to the Comm Commission of Administrative Justice. That's the office of the Ombudsman to find a recourse for the issues that you're facing right now. It's not all doom and gloom, though we know we're not in a good place. My name is Trevor Mbiji. Always a pleasure having you with us. And thank you so much for everyone who made time this night. Mashirima. Na mna kufikia hapo sinilaziada sana kwa kutazama tukutane wiki jaya upanapo majalio usiku mwe.